Hello and welcome again to my lecture series in physics. Today's supplemental uh, lecture is a quick example involving an, the inelastic collision that occurs uh, when a car and a truck crash into each other head on. Um, so the point of the example is suppose that we know the initial speeds of both. Suppose we know that one of the two comes to a stop after the collision and suppose we know the mass of both. Can we determine what uh, the final speed of the other vehicle is and how much energy is lost um, assuming no friction is involved in this uh, problem? So I've drawn on the board behind me a little diagram of this. Uh, basically we have a truck, we have a car, they're heading towards each other for a head-on collision and the truck is a bit more massive. 1900 kilograms is the mass of the truck. 850 kilograms is the mass of the car. Uh, the truck initially has some speed, call it 10 meters per second uh, this way or zero degrees direction. The car has an initial speed of 20 meters per second and it's initially moving at 180 degrees direction so this is going to be a head-on collision. Um, <clears throat> let's say that after the collision the truck comes to a stop. So the final truck is equal to zero. So it's stopped, uh, and we want to know what is the final speed of the car. Uh, in fact, let's leave this as a scalar. So <clears throat> this is a, a collision in which energy is not going to be conserved. It's an inelastic collision. So this is inelastic. And we don't know if it's uh, perfectly inelastic or whether it's just uh, imperfectly inelastic. We only know that the truck has come to a stop after the collision. Um, so to solve this problem we basically can go in two steps. Um, step one would be to figure out what is the final speed of the car. Step two would be to figure out what is the um, lost energy going to be equal to. And so for step one, um, we're going to use conservation of momentum. And for step two, we're going to use that um, E loss, delta E loss, is going to be the uh, final energy minus the initial energy. And so basically this one right here gets um, uh, the speed of the car after the collision. This one right here then can be plugged into the final energy equation because E final is going to be one half M V car final squared. So we have to do this step first to get the car's final speed, then we do this step to figure out how much energy it has finally, and we can plug in numbers for how much it has initially, and get the um, total energy lost. So let's um, start off with step one, which was conservation of momentum. So. <clears throat> That 
it says that the initial momentum and the final momentum have to be equal. And the initial momentum is going to be the mass of the first car times its velocity plus the mass of the truck times its velocity. So this is m truck zero, uh, sorry, m truck v truck zero plus m car v car zero. And that has to be equal to the uh, truck's mass times its final uh, velocity. So v truck final and then plus mass of the car times the car's final velocity. And we were given that the truck comes to a stop at the end, so this term is zero. So really, this has to be equal to this. So let's see, what do we have here? Well, mass of the truck was 1,900. So 1,900 kilograms times the speed, uh, time, times the velocity of the truck. Since this is a one-dimensional problem, we're going to define the velocity going this way as positive and coming back this way as negative. So the truck initially has a positive velocity of 10.0 meters per second. And the car has a mass of 850 kilograms and its initial velocity is coming this way. And so its initial velocity is actually negative 20 meters per second. Okay, and that would be equal to uh, mass of the car times V um, final of the car. So I'm actually going to go ahead and divide out that um, mass of the car from both sides. So here comes mass of the car and here's the mass of the car 850 kilograms uh, kilogram meters per second. Okay so this product here is 10 times uh, 1900 means we've got 19,000 kilogram meters per second in the positive direction. This one, negative 20 times 850, means we have 17,000 kilogram meters per second in the negative direction. So the total momentum is 2,000 kilogram meters per second. So this is 2,000 kilogram meters per second. And that's going to be divided by 850 kilograms. So we end up getting that the final speed, which is what we're looking for, uh, is about 2.35 meters per second uh, in the positive direction, if you want the velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and write that answer up here. 2.35 uh, meters per second. Okay, so step one has been completed at this point. So now we can actually do the second step, which is to figure out the lost energy. So in step two, what we end up doing is calculating the initial energy and the final energy. And then subtracting the two, and that gets us our lost energy. So step two is delta E loss is E final minus E initial, where E final is one half M car V car final squared. So we now have a V final to plug into this thing. So this is going to really be one half times 850 kilograms times um, 2.35 meters per second times another 2.5 uh, 
excuse me, 2.35 meters per second. And so I calculate that the final energy of this thing is approximately um, 2,253 joules. Okay, and then the initial energy is going to be the initial energy of the car plus the initial energy of the truck. So E naught will be one half M car V car initial squared plus one half M truck V truck initial squared. So we have those speeds and we have those masses to plug into this guy. So this right here is going to look like one half times 850 kilograms times uh, 20 meters per second squared plus another one half times 1900 kilograms times another um, 10 meters per second squared. So if I uh, plug these guys into my calculator I get um, 170,000 joules for this guy and I get 95,000 joules for this guy. So that means <coughs> that my E loss is going to be uh, 2253 joules minus 170,000 uh, joules and 95,000 joules. So that means actually that my um, total loss energy is going to be uh, quite the, the large amount um, if we don't do any rounding uh, then it's going to still come out to something like 262,000 uh, so delta E loss is 200 and 62,741 joules. Um, that's how much energy is going to be lost in this collision. And um, since all of our figures up here have something like three significant figures in them, um, depending upon how many of these zeros are significant in the masses, we should probably round this number off to three significant figures. So this is 263,000 joules. So that's how much energy is lost in that car crash. Um, that seems like a pretty big number, and really it is. Uh, if you look at the masses that we have and you look at the speeds we have, these are not unreasonable numbers for a car crash, but just for the sake of argument, it's kind of funny to think about how little energy this is compared to, for example, the amount of energy that we take in uh, by eating. Um, I worked an example a few weeks ago in the energy section that uh, had to do with how much energy you take in from eating Moe's nachos, for example. And the answer was considerably more than this much energy. Um, I think it was an order of magnitude difference or so. So um, it's a lot of energy and yet at the same time it's so little energy. But I think that concludes the, the demo for the day, or the example for the day. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. And uh, thank you and goodbye.